it takes courage to run a business. Do you guys agree with that? If you run your business being scared or being afraid, are you going to have the impact that you want in this world? Well, I had all these slides and I have all this stuff and I really want to scrap that. I really want to give you a message that you really need right now. I really want to just throw all that stuff around and just really talk to you. I'm afraid that if I say the things I want to say and that you need to hear, they, they wouldn't ask me back. <laughs> and this is dead serious. But, so I'll, 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 I'll intermix the same, and I'll try to tone it down just a little bit, unless you guys give me permission. You guys ready for this? Do it. Do it. I love the Olympics. I love to watch the athletes do what they do. I love to watch them be excellent. I've been to seven Olympics. Now, I did run a business where I was required to go to the Olympics and do business that way, so it was my choice, but I love the Olympics. Do you guys know about the high jump? Well, before 1967, they had very different approaches than what we know right now. If you guys can see this picture, he's hurtling over the high bar. But something changed. A guy came along named Dick Fosbury, the Fosbury flop. You ever heard of this guy? It's a great story in having courage. Because he wasn't as good as the people around him. He, ha he didn't have all the talent, but he worked hard. But he also had the courage to do what was different to step up and do what no one else was doing, even if people ridiculed him and thought he was crazy and thought it was funny and thought it was cute. Do you want your businesses to be called cute? <laughs> but Dick took action. And in 1968, he got a chance to go to the Olympics because he was doing it different than anyone else, but not because he was doing it different, because he was getting results. And Dick had the courage to do that. Do you guys know the ending of the story? Gold medal, 1968. Well, what does this have to do with your business? I think it has a lot to do with your business. Because most people don't have the courage to run their business the way they want to. They don't have the courage to go after the clients that they really want to work with because they're waiting for the things to come to them. Encourage is everything. Courage will give you exactly what you need to have the success you want, the impact you want. So let me ask you guys a question. Can we participate just a little bit with each other? Be a little bit more interactive than most of the session? You guys want to play along with that? You guys want to make more money? So everyone wants to make more money. Who wants to do work that really matters? Is that pretty universal? Does anyone want to do work that doesn't matter? <laughs> okay. Right crowd. Um, get out a piece of paper if you guys would. Just, this is just for you, just a little scrap piece of paper. You're going to write down just a few words, but I want you to actually participate in this. It, it, is, it is kind of a requirement. So have the courage to do this. You can use your phone. Now, I want to ask you this. I want you to really think, just for a moment, I'm going to give you 60 seconds. Write down the one skill that you need to have the business you want. Just write down one skill that you think that you don't have, that you want to add to have the business that you really want. so I can fix my slides. All right, has everyone got it? Any more time? Can you pick a person next to you and tell them, and you guys share what your one skill is? 
just really quick. Somebody give me what what did you come up with? What are the what are the main things? Presentation skills like you Hannah. Presentation <laughs> skills like you <laughs> Hannah. Okay. What else? Time management. Time management. What else? Sales? Got it. Love sales. Sales? Diligence. Diligence. What else? People skills. What was that? People ability to talk to people. Ability to talk to people, like me? Okay. Discipline. Discipline? Better at marketing yourself? Something missing. Is that a skill? People skills. One more. Networking. Networking. All of these are great for business, and they're all required. And that's one reason why it's probably so hard to have the business you want, because if you had all of those things, the world is your oyster, right? But what if I told you that those weren't the that wasn't the one skill you needed? I don't even know who you are. You're probably looking at me like, who the hell does he think he is? <laughs> <laughs> this guy, this crowd over here wants to hurt me. <laughs> it's true. You all said some very great things, and I help my clients with pretty much all of those things. But that's not what you need. That's not what you need. Perseverance. So before I go into my message, this is my Twitter handle. This is who I am. I want you guys to be able to interact with me in any way you want to. Um, I'd love to, to chat with people that are, would love to talk about business, talk about life, talk about the things that we're going to talk about today, which a lot of it's about courage. The Adam mentioned about my business, Leaders in the Trenches. I came up with this business because I know how hard it is to be in the trenches of your business. I know how hard it is to work and not really get the results you want. Is anyone ever not getting the results they want? Raise your hand if you've ever, okay. Again, right group. The, the thing about Leaders in the Trenches is it is a podcast and I interview some amazing people. I, I, I'm really honored to be able to do what I do. I'm actually honored to be here with you guys today to be able to share this message and really help you see yourself in a new way. And hopefully, hopefully, that you'll think differently about yourself and about the world. At a personal level, this is my son. We just recently did the Spartan Race Challenge. You guys know what these mud races are about? I'm going to tell you right now. It's four and a half miles. That may not sound like a lot. It's like, I don't know, 30-something obstacles. It will make you want to cry. <laughs> and I'm not talking about because it was cold. I think it was 32 degrees. And I did it with my shirt off, if you can't tell that. And I thought that was crazy. But that, it's actually the better way to do it because you don't have the wet shirt clinging to you. I thought people were crazy, but but what I had to go through and endure to that, and the courage that it took for me to do every one of those obstacles and keep running and keep moving and keep going is a lot like running a business. In fact, as I was doing, I kept thinking about how hard it is to be in the trenches, because I was literally in the <laughs> trenches. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, has anyone ever run these races? Were you in the trenches, in the mud, the barbed wire? That's what it's like to be in your, your business. So I want, you, I want you to understand who I am and who I can, who I, how, what I believe in. So we came here to talk about how you could have the business you want. Like, 
I sold you on some title about authority. And we sold you on, on about having more sales or getting more money than the people around you. Did you guys read that description? We're going to talk about those things, but not in a direct way like most people. I don't have, have like the sets that you need to do because that's not what you need. You need to wake up. So this is um, the three eyes of marketing. I didn't come up with this. Someone else uh, way before me came up with this. Influence, impact, and income. If you want to have a bigger income, you have to make an impact. You have to solve a real problem. You have to really make a difference. Everybody in sync with that? If you want to make an impact, you've got to have influence. They will never give you a chance to make the impact if you don't have influence. They will never give you a chance to, to have the project. They might even give you the chance to talk to them on the phone. So you have to have influence. Now, these are a really good framework to think about for your business growth. And it takes courage to have each one of these things. But there's something missing. I told you there was one skill that you really need to understand. And most people don't get this. It's identity. Identity is understanding who you are in this world and who you serve is the basis for having the business you want. It is the basis for you actually doing what you want to do. It's doing work that matters. And from there, you make money. And I'm proof of this. I spent a lot of years not making the kind of money I wanted to make in this business as a business coach. I spent a lot of years propping up my clients to make a lot more money. But then it started to turn. My income started to raise. And guess what? Their impact started to raise even more. So it's pretty thrilling to see this in in come true within my own business and then within my client's business as well. And I'm sharing this with you because I want you to understand that if you want something different right now, if you don't have the results, it's not because you don't have some skill. It's not because you don't have something specific that you are searching through the books you read and the um, videos that you watch and the email list that you're on, the training that you go get. It's because you don't understand yourself. And when you understand yourself, you will get what you want. So what we're talking about here is mindset. As a business coach, was it surprising that I'm going to talk about mindset? Probably not. But mindset is everything. Mindset keeps you from taking actions, and it keeps you from doing the things you really want to do. It keeps you safe. Mindset is one of those things that if you don't understand your mindset, the thinking behind what you're doing and how you're doing it, and we can take sales, for example. If you don't understand the right mindset to go into sales, you will fall, and you'll keep falling until you understand what you really need to understand, which is about how you should show up in sales. I... I usually tell this story, and I'm going to try to be brief here, because many of you probably know this. Does anyone know my background? I know a few of you here. I have a few clients in here. I, I realized mindset was such an important element now when I look back. So I, when I, I, uh, Adam was talking about my, my million-dollar businesses. So the, here's, the, here's the truth behind my million-dollar businesses. Because it sounds really cool, right? In 2001, I started a business, and I had $2 million, $3 million in sales. I'd have to go back and look at my tax returns to know the exact number. And it sounds really good. Here's the reality. I doubled my profits the next year. So I went from 30 to 60. I continued to do that over and over and over. I went from 60 to 120. I went from 120 to 240. I went to 240 to over 400. Now... You may say, well, he finally had the business he wanted. It's because I got my mindset straight. It's because I got all of those things straight. I could get my strategy in order. And from there, I got my confidence in order to be able to take and, and do the things I needed to do. And from there, I got it all together. I had a business. In 2008, I did $1.3 million in profit for me and my partners in seven weeks. 
And this is before the launches and all the things that you hear about. This was real profit. This was me working my butt off to get it done. I'm sharing this with you because it was my mindset that changed, that allowed my strategy to change, that allowed my business to change. You guys get that? Well, I told you I was going off script. Can I get really raw with you guys, or do you guys want the fluffy speech? Go for it. We want fluff? <laughs> Who wants fluff? Get out. <laughs> Seriously, go ahead. The raw and real speech that you really need to hear is that 80% of entrepreneurs are morons. <coughs> it's true. I had a workshop the other day. You were there. You were part of this study. Because I was a moron? <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes. But I asked a group of people about how much of your work comes from you picking up the pieces from someone else's failed competence. I'm getting a lot of heads like, oh, yeah. But when I say 80% are morons, I don't remain you guys here. I mean, that's the people out there. The ones that chose not to come in here today, those are the morons. No. Um, but seriously, they are chasing everything. They are reactive to the market. They are waiting for referrals. I, I love referrals, too. I mean, they're, they're, they're the greatest uh, sign that we are good at what we do and that people acknowledge and trust us. But if that's all you have in your business, it's a problem. Most of my clients that come to me have a lot of referrals, and they still don't have the income they want. Because referrals come in when they want to come in, not when you want them to come in. <laughs> but 80% are morons. Here's the good news. You guys can be in the top 10%, 20%, or more. If you're willing to have the courage to decide what kind of business you really want and really go for it. If you really want to do this, if you're good at what you do, you can have that kind of business. You can go out there and get paid twice what the market pays. Whatever market you're in. I've never had a client that couldn't raise their rates. Why is that? Some of them raised their rates. How, many, how long did it take you to raise your rates? One conversation. Why did it take one conversation to raise your rates? Mindset. That, you know, I, I didn't command that. Lack of courage. Lack of courage. Confidence. How about you, Adam? How, long, how, how quickly did you raise your rates? Immediately. Immediately. Why has the opportunity always been there, but they couldn't see it? And you're sitting here right now, you're in the same spot. And I'm not kidding. I don't know your business. If you're getting referrals, if you're good at what you do, and you feel like you're the best kept secret in your business, does anyone feel like the best kept secret? We got one hand. <laughs> Somebody give this guy a check. It's a problem. Because you don't have the business you want is not because you don't have some skill. It's because what you see for yourself. It's how you see the world. Another exercise. This one should be easier, depending on who you are. So write this down. When I raise my hand, I want you to come back to me, okay? I'm not going to say a word. Just come back to me because I'm going to... But I want you to really think about this. What are the two things that you hope your clients say about you? And write those things down right now. They can be a phrase. You want to hear the exact same words.
All right, you guys done? Somebody give me some of the things that you wrote down. He follows through. He follows through. That's a good one. Good communication. Good listen. communication. Trust him. He listens. He listens. Valuable. Trust. Valuable. Extra valuable. Extra valuable. Worth every penny. Worth every penny. She helped me. Help me succeed. Help me succeed. Now, look at your piece of paper. Does anyone have on there, I want to be the lowest cost? <laughs> Does anyone? Raise your hand. Be honest. Does it have cheapest? I want to be like Walmart. <laughs> Here's what I want you to understand here. That the reason that you don't have the business you want is because you haven't taken account to what the market is saying about you. Because when you want influence, you have to shape what they're going to say. You have to shape this. How do you shape it? We'll talk about that in just a minute. But there's three areas I think that perception really comes into play if you want to raise your rates and you want to have a stronger business and make more impact. Those areas are brand, your brand is about how they see the work that you do, the service that you provide, the impact that you make in their market. Brand is not about anything other than what they say about you. It's their perception. Do you guys get that? You can do all the work in the world, but it's what they say. Can you shape that? Yes. but it is say in return. The second part of that is value. We had a couple of people talk about being valuable. I am huge on value-based pricing and charging what you're worth, not by your time, but by your impact. It is huge. And if you don't understand that, you will stay stuck. If you're trading time for money, if you think about it in any shape, form, or fashion about I have an hourly rate and it's going to take me so many hours to do it and you multiply those things out, it's a problem. Value is not your perception. It's your client's perception. Does anyone not understand that? I've had clients that don't, that don't understand this, so I'll explain it just a little bit. When you are creating a project for them or you're talking about the project that they're going to create, you can't give them the value. You can help them understand the value by the questions you ask, but they have to tell you what a client's worth, they have to tell you what a lead's worth, they have to tell you what this feature will be worth to their business. But it's in their words, not yours. If you give them the words and the value, you are likely to get resistance. Oh, this is worth $1,000. Who says? They have to say it. That's what I mean by perception and their value. The other part to this is authority. How they see you as an individual. I don't care if you're running a company or you are the leader of a team. We have many leaders. How many leaders do we have here? It, it does. I was just about to say this. Claudia is still in my thunder here. Every one of you should think of yourself as a leader. So it's a little trick question. But how does the market perceive your authority? How do they perceive the value that you bring and the services you offer? Those are the three areas of perception that you need to understand and be aware of so that you can have the business you want, so that you can make the impact that you really want to make. Do you guys want to understand value a little bit better? 
I've got some free training if you want to do this. If you can get your cell phone out, and you can do 38470, and you're going to send the word trenches. The name of my company is what? Leaders in the Trenches. You will get put on a free, completely free, um, set of videos about value and about how you can understand your value, how you can help your clients understand the value, and about how you can charge more money. Does that sound pretty cool? I give away a ton of free stuff in my business. I actually believe that ha helps my authority by giving away as much value as I can in a free basis before I actually ask for anything in return. We have, do we have any podcast listeners here for my podcast? One, two, three, four, sometimes. <laughs> it's all free. I've interviewed 141 people, well, more than that, but 141 published people about their business and about how to move forward. All that's free. You guys need this anymore? If you get on this list, I'm going to send you the, the training on understanding your own value. So here's the biggest question of today. What are you afraid of? What are you guys afraid of? Rejection. Rejection. Failure. Failure. What else? Not making enough money. Not making enough money. Don't have much time left. Much time left. Is that to make a difference or make the money? <laughs> or both? Fear is what gets in the way of you having exactly what you want. There's quite a few fears that I'm going to go over here today because I want you to really understand this. I think when you understand fear, you have a better chance to build courage despite the fear. The fear will never go away. I'm standing before you you know, I've been doing this for five years. I ran a business for 10 years before that. I ran a business, I was in corporate America 10 years before that. Do you think that I have reached different levels of fear within each of those steps? Back when I told you the story of me working with my coach before and raising my profits over four years, do you think I had new fears that would come up every time? The answer is yes. So how you deal with the fears and, and understand them will really help you. So I'm gonna walk through. The fear of failure is huge, right? The fear that it will not work out. The fear that it will be not as you want it to be keeps you from taking the actions. A lot of people play small and play in their comfort zones because it's safe, even though they know that's not where they want to be. Bless you. Another fear is the fear of losing what you have. I had this one. I, 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 I lived this one, and I know this one so well. I know this one to the core. Because I told you I ran a business before, and it had multi-million dollars in sales, and I had finally figured out how to make that profitable. Okay? And when I did that, I had reached a level of safety and security within my own business that I was afraid to let go of. Yet, there was something inside of me about my purpose that was not allowing me to come out. It was, that business was about money. It tr everything was about money in that business, and it, it pained me. My wife would come to me and say, why don't you just change businesses? Like, it's that easy. It was my identity with what I did. I was a market leader. I was making millions of dollars. And I had the chance to continue that for as long as I wanted to. I would never give up on that. So I'm sharing this with you because here's what happened. I had to lose it all to be able to make the change. I had to lose $3 million in one day. If you guys don't know the story, you're, this is the point where they go, ah, oh, how does he do that? It was gut-wrenching, painful. I curled up in a ball. There were days I didn't get out of bed. Was I afraid? More than ever. I would lost my confidence. I lost my house. I lost my business. I lost my savings. I lost everything. 
There's probably a lot of questions in there. I won't get into it here. I have nothing to hide, but I have so much more to say. But I did lose everything. But don't look at that as something bad, because actually it was a gift. I never would have given up that other business, the success I had, the money I was making, had I not had it pulled away from me. And I get to do this today. I get to be here. I get to make a difference with the people I work with. I get to make a difference with the people that just listen to my podcast. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. That other thing looks like a nightmare. Even though from the outside in, it looks like I just made a bunch of money and I traveled the world going to the Olympics and yada, yada, yada. But don't be afraid to lose what you have. Hopefully you don't have to lose what you have like I did. But don't be afraid. Another part of failure, or failure, if I get it right, is about really what people would think about you. Does anybody care about what people think about them? We have some smiles over here. Everyone's afraid to raise their hand because they're afraid of what people might think about them. <laughs> it all comes back to that. When I lost everything, what do you think I was afraid of? What would my family say? What would my friends say? What would the world say about me? Those are all stories that I made up in my head. Did I lose some friends out of what happened to me? Yes, I did. Were they really friends to begin with? No, they weren't. You guys know that. But it's hard when you're inside of it. I recognize that. I recognize that if you want the business that you really want, and you want to make a difference, you want to do work that matters, you have to face these fears. You have to move forward. You have to figure out what is it going to take for you to have what you want. I just realized I haven't said WordPress the entire time today. <laughs> is that okay? Yeah. Is that like the quota that you have to say it once? They don't invite you back unless you talk about WordPress. Um, so how, what does all this have to do with it? No. <laughs> if they don't invite me back, they don't invite me back. But if you want to be a leader in your market, it is no longer good enough to say, I just build websites. I started to have a little exercise, and I was going to do this, and I still think it'd be funny to bring people in here um, and have them say what they do. Give their 60-second elevator pitch. The reason I think it's funny, because I've, I've done this in rooms before, where we've had 12 people, and all 12 of them say the exact same thing. And the 12th one goes, just this, whatever he said. <laughs> and I, I step back and go, do you guys see that as a problem? <laughs> How can people make decisions about your own value, your own influence, your own impact. They begin to choose on money. And if you go back to that piece of paper that you wrote down, no one wrote down, I want to be the cheapest. Did they? So I share this with you because this is critical. When you decide to be a leader, it takes courage. When you decide to be a leader, you have to face the fears that keep you exactly where you are. Even if those fears are that you're not good enough, that you're not worth it. Those are the inner critic talking. That inner voice rarely ever props you up and says, go for it, does it? Even if it's not good for you, even if you don't like the way your bank account looks right now, it's because you're not willing to face your fears. There's three things I'm going to leave you with today that I want you to really embody. And most people won't understand them. And there will be resistance. If there's resistance, I'm going to ask that you really understand where that resistance comes instead of just looking at me like I'm a crockpot. Crackpot. <laughs> 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 
The first one is you've got to learn to let go of blaming others. First time I heard this, I didn't get it. I thought, it's not me. It's them. The reason I don't have the business is because they're not paying me what I deserve. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands. I know the answer. I wasn't willing to accept that it was me. I wasn't willing to accept that it was my responsibility to make the sales calls. Honestly, I wanted them to call me. I wanted the referrals just like everybody wants. And I get referrals. At one point in time, this guy over here, Adam that introduced me, had referred five clients to me that were paying me a pretty good amount of money. Five people from one person. I thought I was living the lar large life, right? So thank you, Adam. <laughs> but that's a comfort zone that you play in if you wait for referrals. You're waiting for someone else to give you the business you want. You're waiting for it to turn around. Did anybody listen to Jason Swank yesterday talk about um, hope? I'm going to tell you a story about Jason in a minute. <laughs> Blaming others is a huge problem to your success. Are you willing to step up and say, this is my fault? When you blame others, you're giving them the control that you need to have what you want. It may take you a while to understand that, but I'm planting the seed right now. When you take full ownership, 100% responsibility of your own success, you gain the power. Do you guys get that? You can say yes whether you do or not. It's essential to you making the influence, the impact, and the income that you want in your business. I don't care what business you're in. I usually ask this. How many designers do we have? Like that, that, Their hardcore business is design. Development. Other. What are some of the other businesses? Content. What is it? Content. Content. Project management. Project management. What else? Marketing consultants. Okay. All of this applies to each one of you. Don't think you're immune. The next one is letting go of trying to serve everyone. You can't be all things to all people. When I started my podcast, honestly, I think people got tired of me saying this, that you needed to niche your company. And so I don't say the word niche as much. I talk about being a market leader. But you cannot be a market leader if you're trying to please everyone. You guys get that? It's no fun trying to please everyone. You water down your message. You water it down so that you become irrelevant. You think you're trying to cast a big net, and you're really just hurting yourself because you don't have the courage to stand up for what you believe in. You don't have the courage to go out there and get the business that you really want and do work that matters. The other thing, I don't have a slide for it, so this is not the right slide. I told you I changed this. The other one is I, I have the unique fortune to be able to be a, a third party perspective to many people's businesses. I've also interviewed all of these incredible seven figure business owners, um, best selling authors, and speakers, and things like that. Do you think that gives me some credibility to share with you? That, do you, that will you guys accept that? Yes. What I've noticed is the one thing besides identity, that they understand is they understand that they have to take action. They have to let go of being perfect and procrastination. Now, you may say, I don't have that problem. But I once did a, uh, a, a little experiment with some clients, and we, were, we called it low-hanging fruit. Derek, you did this, didn't you? Four people on the call. I told them, if you want to add more income to your business, do you guys want the, the, the little exercise? We'll see if you're willing to do it. 
right? Is go back over the last six months of everyone who said no to you and get back on the phone with them. I like you, you're writing it down. It's an action taker. Add to that, back over the last 18 months, all of the people who said yes to you but you haven't talked to in three months. So there's two groups. Now, it would make sense that you already know what's going on with the people that you did work for, but honestly, I worked in an agency. I know that you move on to the next thing, the next client, the next project. I know what happens. The four people that decided to do this exercise with us, everyone accepted we were going to do it. Three of them got amazing results, one didn't. One of them got like a $15,000 project. One of them got um, like five or six meetings that led to over 100000 in sales. Do you remember what you got, Derek? I did all right. I don't remember exactly. He got, a pro he got a couple of projects at it, like small projects. But he did the work, right? The fourth one, what do you think he did? Nothing. His words back to me were, I was waiting for it to be perfect. He didn't have the courage to do what he really wanted to do. He's probably still waiting. And this was over a year ago. And I say this honestly. He's probably still waiting for it to be perfect. Excuse me? You're overdue to talk. You're right. I won't argue with that. So... Here's my story of Jason Swank, and, and some of you guys may know this, this in here. I won't give you the full story, because there's lots to it. I used to work for Jason. Jason headhunted me through LinkedIn. He just reached out and said, will you be my VP of sales? I said, maybe. <laughs> and it made sense. It was a good, good opportunity, and I liked Jason. And I started working with Jason, and I helped him do some of the things that he talked about yesterday in his 12 steps. A lot of the things that he shared with you, he would tell you that they came from me bringing into his company. And I am proud of him because when I went out, on, he sold the company. I helped him get to the point where he could sell the company. And so I was able to go out and be a coach myself. It was what I really wanted to do. I didn't want to work for someone else. It was <coughs> part of me. Jason, 18 months ago, less than, honestly, 16 months ago, called me up one day and said, Gene, do people sign up on your list, on your website? And I said, yeah, they do all the time. And he goes, shit. <laughs> what am I doing wrong? I got seven people, and one of them's my mom. <laughs> he even joked, his mom comments on his blog. <laughs> but I'm sharing this with you because in 18 or 16 months, the conversations I have with Jason as a coach to a client, he took action. He doesn't have that fear thing that a lot of people deal with. Because he sees everything as a test. I sent him a video the other day, and I kind of felt bad about it. I put a lot of work in this video, and I said, what do you think? Really engaging. It's a good start. <laughs> I was like, and I started thinking, that's the, that's the way he thinks. Everything's a test. He took action. Now, if you don't know Jason's full story, you can go to leadersinthetrenches.com forward slash 130, and he'll tell you in his own words that in January, he did 51000 in sales because I helped him become a market leader. He's got five streams of income. He's a paid international speaker. All because he had the courage to do it. He didn't blame anyone else. And he took action. I asked my wife one day, why do you think Jason's so successful? She said, because he takes action. He's not afraid to fail. He's not afraid to do anything other than put it out there. Now, it may seem like I'm telling you a lot of stories about my clients. It's because I'm proud of my clients. I'm proud of the work they've done, but I have that unique perspective that it takes to be successful, that it takes courage, that it takes not willing to 
um, to take full ownership into what you want. If you don't have what you want right now, it's because you don't understand something. You don't understand something that is keeping you on track. So I'm getting the time signal. What is your next step? What is your absolute next step? Write it down. If you're procrastinating on something, I don't care what it is, what will it take for you to do that one thing that will put you on the journey to having the business you want, to do work that matters? And don't leave here today without writing it down, and in my opinion, if you want to take it to the next level, sharing it with someone that you care about, that cares about you, that is willing to hold you accountable to whatever that next step is. And if you have, I'm going to ask, I'm going to do a few questions in just a minute. But if you have um, any questions that you would like to talk to me about your business, if you're really serious about taking it to the next level, I've got a few spots that I open up in my schedule. I'm really busy these days, which is great. But I also know that I want to give back. If you have a question about your own leadership, about your courage, about your mindset, about your sales, about your strategy, about being an action taker, then come up to me after it's over, hand me your business card, and my office will schedule time with me. Does that make sense? And we'll skip that one. If you guys do want to have that conversation with me, I've got a free gift for you, which is what I call the profitable avatar. It's an exercise I run my clients through about being a market leader and about knowing who they serve and about being exactly the person that you need to be and understand that person so that you can serve them to the highest level possible. And I'll give that to you completely free. I normally sell that for like $197, but I'm going to give it to anyone who wants to have that conversation with me. All right. Um, this is Leaders in the Trenches. As I look at this, I realize something. I changed everything in this message. My slides aren't up there yet. That page does not work today. <laughs> I will make it work tonight. But I put this up here because I want you to stay in, in contact with me. Questions? You're afraid. OK. <laughs> Push too hard. I'll give you a question. So if you lack if you lack clarity and you just start throwing everything out there, you're all over the place. So there's no consistent message. Right. So where's the question? When, basically if you lack clarity, you shouldn't be throwing anything out there, is that correct? In my opinion, a lot of people think that you you have a business that just does stuff until you figure out who you're here to serve. And I, I did that for the first four years of my other business. And as a coach, I realized that I didn't have to do that. I could literally claim that I want to work with web design and development firms. And so I did that. I just claimed it. I just, I mean, I did some research. So I actually walked my clients through a process of how do you select who that market is. When you're clear about that, then you can create a message that exactly serves them. But here's what gets in the way. Most people are too scared. Any other questions? Um, when you're talking about your identity, you're figuring it out. Um, do you distinguish between business identity and your personal identity? Or is it sort of I don't know if this is a male thing or female thing. But OK, when, you have, when you're talking about identity, is there a difference between the personal identity and the business identity? <coughs> As a guy, I tend to think of myself as a, as a person and closely related to my business. So when I lost everything before, I was shattered. Is that bad or good? I don't know. I think they're intertwined to a degree because you know, we're talking about authenticity these days. We're talking about being your real self. Do you think I had a script for this? Or do you think it was just something that comes from my heart? 
because it, it comes from my heart. So I, that's, does that answer your question? Yes. One more question, and I got some one final thing to say to you guys. Uh, if you have a full-time job and you still want to do something on the side, how much longer do you think that delays your having the business you'd like? And of course, it's kind of the same for you. Who else is in that boat? Okay. It, it is. It is tough, especially in the in this day with LinkedIn and and all the stuff you want to do. If you want to put. Like, say you have a sideline business and you can't put it on LinkedIn, that becomes a problem, right? If you have a sideline business where you um, can run it completely separate, you, until you get to a point where it becomes a problem, it's, you know, it's not really a problem. But there's something that goes on. There's some conflict with, do I 100% agree with just going out on my own? So my, my personal perspective is as quickly as I can, I'm going to prove my business, and then I'm going to do whatever I can. I'm going to make a strong enough commitment to make that my business. And in my case, I took money out of my 401k. It pained me. It absolutely pained me. But I knew that without that level of commitment, I wouldn't have the business I wanted. So I did the coaching thing on the side for, for about two years, and it was horrible because what, what people saw in me was – Two different things, two different messages. That, that's the reality of it. Can you do it? Yes. Can you, when you get to the point that you are successful, you're going to have to make a decision. So one of my clients, Jason, we talked about earlier, in April of last year. So he stood <laughs> up here this year um, and talked about his business. If you guys heard that, you, you understand this. But in April of last year, he had a job. He was the executive of a, of a company. He was a CIO. And um, his boss called, pulled him in last April and said, make a decision, this side thing or be an executive with my company. And the guy's like, you're making me choose? <laughs> and Jason's like, I don't want to choose. He goes, you have to choose. All right, I choose the other thing. <laughs> and the guy goes, what the hell is this business you have? <laughs> he said, I got this amazing business coach. Um, <laughs> he made, he's like, I made $16,000 last month, which was more than his salary. So I wanted you to know that. Um, and you guys can come up and ask me questions afterwards. Here's my parting words. You guys ready? It takes courage to have the business you want. It takes